Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. This is Tony and today we're going to be talking about a major breakthrough in the iOS 12 jailbreak scene. So this and more in today's video. Stay tuned. So there really isn't a great place to start out this video. There is a lot of stuff we have to talk about, but first and foremost, I want to say definitely subscribe to stay updated. There's going to be some major things coming out in the very near future, and I don't want you guys to miss out. Also, if you appreciate these jailbreak updates, definitely give this video a huge thumbs up. And if you want all of this information in a written format, definitely check out our Best Tech Info article regarding this video. All right, well, there's so much incredible news we have to talk about in today's video. Let's go ahead and start out with the iOS 12.1.3 security contents release notes. Now, if you guys haven't seen my last video, definitely check it out. It'll be in your cards now or down below in this video's description. I would highly suggest anyone who's updated to iOS 12.1.3 to definitely downgrade to iOS 12.1.2 and or if you're lucky, downgrade to iOS 12.1.1 while it's still being signed by Apple. Again, this information is in the cards now or in this video's description. All right, well, on to the news. Well, taking a look at the security contents, if we scroll down to some of the kernel patches that were made, actually, let's start out with IOK even. This one right here was attributed to Ian Beer of Google's Project Zero, who is a well-known security researcher who commonly releases his information eventually about his exploits. I'm really excited to see what Beer has in store for us this year with the iOS 12 jailbreak scene. Again, simple things like this. A malicious application may be able to break out of its sandbox. That already sounds interesting right there, but if we scroll down to the kernel exploits right here, it just keeps going on and on and on. If you guys counted, there's a total of six kernel patches in iOS 12.1.3, which again is the biggest reason why you guys wanna avoid this software at all costs. With every new iOS version that comes out, there's always just more and more security patches and kernel patches within these updates. But in today's case, it's Kind of a good and bad thing. It sucks that all of this has been patched in today's update for future iOS versions, but it's also a great thing because some of the major players in the iOS 12 jailbreak scene, like Brandon Azad, as well as, sorry, my bad, all of their bugs have now been patched in iOS 12.1.3 officially by Apple, meaning now at any point in time, they can actually release their information. As you guys can see, like I said, Brandon Azad, sorry, my bad, we have some other members of Google Pro Project Zero. We have Ian Beer on multiple kernel level exploits. Brandon is at again on a couple and again just another member of Google's Project Zero. So a lot of stuff was patched and now basically comes to the point in time where we're waiting to see what is released. Well some major stuff was actually released yesterday right after this update was pushed by Apple. So let's head over to Twitter so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. Well, one of the big ones, like I said, was by Brandon Azad. He tweeted this out at 10.43 a.m. yesterday, shortly after iOS 12.1.3 was pushed at 10 a.m. He says, if you're interested in bootstrapping iOS kernel security research, including the ability to forge PACs and call arbitrary kernel functions, keep an A12 research device on iOS 12.1.2. So right off the bat, this is just great news already. Whatever Brandon Azad is going to be releasing, it could be a proof of concept project, it could be a write-up about how he exploited iOS, it could actually be an entire exploit. But whatever it is, it's going to work on A12 devices like the iPhone XS, XS Max, and XR, and it's going to work on one of Apple's latest versions of iOS, being iOS 12.1.2. So that is just one thing I wanted to share with you guys. More information is going to be coming from Brandon Azad. Well, what was actually released yesterday? Well, late yesterday evening, right around six o'clock, Sorry My Bad published this. He tweeted this out saying, here's the proof of concept of the bug I used to jailbreak before. If you guys recall, I did multiple jailbreak updates talking about Sorry My Bad's tweet with his iOS 12.1.2 jailbreak. This has been a long time coming. He actually first demoed this on iOS 12.1 that was released all the way back in November. Well, November passed, December passed, January almost passed, and here we are just right before the 90 days passed. Apple finally patched his vulnerability in iOS 12.1.3. So that being the case, he notes it can work before iOS 12.1.2. The blog post about the exploit on A12 will be coming soon. 
And this is kind of why I took a second to wait to see exactly what was going to be released, because shortly after, just about six hours later, he actually released his entire blog write-up, and he actually has a demo of a remote jailbreak actually taking place. He basically installs Terminal on his iPhone XS Max. So this is just great news. He not only released all of the information about his vulnerability on his blog, but he released a proof of concept project on there as well. He even released this jailbreak demo. And the crazy thing to me, he can actually trigger the jailbreak to happen within Safari. Again, that's kind of what the voucher UAF remote jailbreak is. And this is just the stage two. He's just giving us little bits and pieces and explaining the path he took on how to make these exploits. But just to clarify, he didn't release his final exploit. He didn't release a final jailbreak utility or anything like that. He even notes on his blog that all of the post-exploitation processes are going to need to be figured out by the jailbreak community themselves. But the blog is super in-depth, and I guess I can go ahead and click on it. If I go back, he actually later tweeted an English version of this. I can link this down below in this video's description if you guys want to take a look at what he posted. But long story short, uh, this is what it looks like um, and he goes through all of the steps of getting TPF0 and uh, basically exploiting iOS 12 on A12 devices. And so this is just super incredible, all that he released. He finally came through and released his information that he's been talking about for a few months now. Now to wrap things up, and just to further clarify, definitely stay on the lowest version of iOS that you possibly can if you're interested in jailbreaking. So Jonathan Levin actually tweeted this out and I really liked it. He says, spelling it out, iOS 12.1.2, tvOS 12.1.1, and watchOS 5.1.2 are presently the last confirmed versions of iOS that can be jailbroken. Again, this is just a developer jailbreak. It's not a tweak or Cydia jailbreak as of yet. He says you can stay on lower versions of iOS or not. It's up to you. It's your choice. But yet another bug has been patched in iOS 12.1.3. So kind of just to clarify here, really, if you're on iOS 12.1.3, definitely downgrade. If not, I would personally just stay exactly where you're at. Now, as of recording this video, iOS 12.1.1 is still being signed by Apple. And in my professional opinion, I would personally downgrade to that just to ensure you have the best possible chances of jailbreaking in the near future. Again, if you missed the 12.1.1 signing window, definitely downgrade to 12.1.2. Basically, what I'm getting at is in all costs, avoid iOS 12.1.3. Definitely get off that firmware. A bunch of stuff was just patched. Everything that was just released in today's video or that's going to be released in the next couple of weeks is going to be patched in iOS 12.1.3 and future versions of iOS. So definitely stay on the lowest possible version of iOS that you can. Pwn to own notes right here that the kernel exploit is going to work on both versions, being iOS 11 and iOS 12, but the jailbreak patches will be considerably harder on iOS 12 because no one has ever created a jailbreak utility for iOS 12, a public jailbreak utility that is. All of those post-exploitation processes are unknown at this point of how long that's going to take. So a little bit of more info about what Pwn to Own is discussing with the iOS 11 jailbreak scene. Now this is coming directly from Pwn to Own on the R jailbreak subreddit. He says, I've tested Sorry My Bad's proof of concept code on iOS 11, and I can confirm that the bug exists and leads to a kernel panic. Updating Uncover for iOS 11.4 and 11.4.1 will be a matter of adding the new kernel exploit that provides a clean kernel task port TPF0 once it is here, whereas iOS 12, in contrast, will require multiple jailbreak patches to be updated and new patches to be written. So that's a very clear and very easy explanation of why an iOS 11.4 and 11.4.1 jailbreak is going to be coming sooner than one for iOS 12. And I can't seem to find the tweet or comment on Reddit that Pwn sent out. He basically said the first thing he's going to be working on is a non-setter for iOS 12 once that exploit is out, which basically lets non-jailbroken devices take advantage and use SHSH blobs. So if you guys are on iOS 12.1 or below, just save your blobs for iOS 12.1.1 and 12.1.2 because in the future you might be able to actually use those on a non-jailbroken 
jailbroken device to update to the latest jailbreakable version of iOS 12 when a jailbreak is out. Now, if you want more information on SHSH blobs, definitely do a quick Google search. They're not the most reliable thing and they can only be used in particular cases. Most notably, if you're jailbroken, say on 11.3.1, you can easily set your nonce and update to iOS 12, 12.0.1, 12.1, 12.1.1, or 12.1.2 after their official signing window has closed. Again, that is if you have your blob saved for those versions, if you're jailbroken and or what I was talking about just a second ago, if Pwn releases a nonce setter where you can actually set your nonce to not randomly generate when you boot up your device and when you enter a restore, that has to be created first before blobs can be used on a non-jailbroken device to either update or downgrade your iOS devices. Again, they're just nice to have in the background. I really wouldn't rely on them, but it is a good idea just to save them in case. Anyway guys, that is pretty much everything I had to talk about in today's video. Sorry, my bad released his information about his iOS 12.1.2 jailbreak on the latest flagship devices like the iPhone XS, XS Max, and XR. We also have more information from Brandon Azad coming very shortly as well. And from the Apple security release notes, it sounds like they might actually be talking about the same bug. They're both credited on the same CVE, so we'll have to wait and see if we actually have one or two different vulnerabilities. But in the end, it has finally been released. It's just a matter of time now for Pwn to own to take this information and transform it into a working iOS 12 kernel exploit. And it sounds like he has a lot more on deck before this step, like an iOS 11.4.1 jailbreak and an iOS 12 nonce setter. So like I said, guys, just absolutely incredible news today. iOS 12.1.3 was kind of a blessing in disguise. Sure, it patched a lot of stuff, but now that all that has been patched, all of those security researchers can now release their information about the bugs they found on older iOS versions at their own leisure. And that's exactly what happened. We saw a slew of things be released and we have a bunch of people interacting with this information. So with that being the case, definitely subscribe, hit that thumbs up button so you guys stay updated with the latest jailbreaking news. And when anything comes out, if there's any updates, I will be the first to make a video to inform you guys of the latest news. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Definitely check out our Best Tech Info article regarding this information if you guys have time. Until next time, this is Tony signing out.